How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. If you have trouble keeping your dog inside your yard, this video is for you. In this video we're going to be showing you how to install an in-ground dog fence. All right guys, now I have a one-year-old golden doodle named Duke and he is a great dog but lately he's been wandering outside of our property, getting close to the road and things like that. Now we do have a pretty large property here, so he has plenty of room to run and play, but I do want to keep him contained inside our property. And one of the best ways to do that is an in-ground dog fence. Now I have tried wireless systems in the past, but there are a few problems with those. Now first, a lot of those have really small containment areas. Here on my property, we have three and a half or four acres that I'd like him to be able to go on if he can. Now there are wireless systems out there that do a lot of cool stuff and can do really big boundary areas, but the problems with those is they are very, very expensive, and most of them have a very short battery life, so you have to recharge them every single night and I just don't want to have to do that. So ultimately the system I decided to go with is the Extreme Dog Fence System. This system comes very highly recommended, lots of great reviews on this system. It is an in-ground fence, but you can go as big as you want just depending on how much wire you choose to go with. Now I have 1,500 feet of wire here with an additional 50 feet of their coiled wire, and I will get in here and show you all the components of the system here in a minute. It also has a very small, very lightweight collar system, which I really like. I don't like anything big and bulky on his neck. So I think this is gonna work out great. Now installing a system like this can be pretty intimidating, which is why in the past I haven't gone with anything like that. But once you understand how to do it, it's really quite simple and I am gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. But first guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell and give us a thumbs up. Now let's get in here, I'll show you the components of the system and the tools we're gonna to use to install. All right, guys, now this is the Extreme Dog Fence System. First off, one thing I love about this is Extreme is an American company and they offer a lot of different versions of their in-ground fence system. They have some that are meant just for correction. They have a standard system, which is a little more economical. And what I have here is the Pro System. Let's just go through here and I'll show you everything that it comes with. First, we have our wire. Now this is a 16 gauge polyethylene coated wire. This is a very heavy duty wire that's definitely gonna stand up to being buried in your yard. It's gonna stand up over time. This wire is gonna be your boundary wire. This is gonna be your outer perimeter of your yard. They also have 50 foot of this coiled wire. The coiled wire is so you can run back to your control panel and the coiled wire does not give a boundary. So the dog can cross over the coiled wire without an issue. Next, you have your control panel here. This is where you're gonna control your system, set the correction levels and things like that. The way this is gonna work is your boundary wire is gonna run in here, and then your power cable is gonna come out here and go to an outlet. They do recommend installing this inside so that you don't have to worry about weather, but they do also offer this waterproof box so you can mount it to the outside of your home if you want to, and I think that's what I'm gonna be doing with my system. Then of course they have all of your components for connecting your wires together. They have waterproof wire nuts for connecting different strands of wire together. They're also gonna come with these landscaping stakes so you can stake the wire down either inside your trench or on top of the ground. This wire is also rated to go on top of the ground as well. Then obviously you're gonna have your training flags. They give you plenty of training flags based on the amount of wire that you get. So once we have our system installed, we're gonna put these boundary flags out to help train our dogs so they learn where that boundary is. Then of course you have your collar. Now there's a lot of things about this that I love. This is supposed to be 100% waterproof up to I believe 10 feet, which is more than enough uh, for your dog in the rain and things like that. Even if you have a pond on your property and you wanna allow them to swim, this should be just fine for that. The collar that it's attached to though uh, is just a standard dog collar. There's really nothing special about it. Uh, but one thing I do like is the way it attaches, I should be able to take the receiver here off of this collar and put it onto his existing collar. You do have a little LED light here that's gonna let you know when the battery is going low. Now this is battery operated. 
has a little battery compartment here. This is not rechargeable, uh, so that may be a deal breaker for some of you guys, but the battery life on this thing is about four months, depending on how much correction it has to do. Now, four months is a good long time, especially compared to the competitors, and I see no problem with that. Extreme does have a proprietary battery though, so you will have to order your battery directly from them. Uh, you can also get it on Amazon. And of course, I will link to all of this stuff as well as the tools we're gonna be using for install in the description below. Now there are a few different tools that we're gonna be using to install this system, but one of the most important and the one that I think is gonna make your life a whole lot easier, especially if you're on a large property, is an edger. So this is used for edging your driveways and sidewalks and things like that. But what we're gonna be able to do with this edger is we're gonna be able to make a small trench that we can put our wire down into that will be very easy to just fill back over. Now you can get the job done with just a flat shovel going one foot at a time, digging that trench, but that is not the ideal way to do it. And that's definitely not what I want to do. So I think this edger is gonna come in handy and I'll show you guys how that works here in just a minute. All right, guys, now that was a much younger, much more naive version of myself way back 24 hours ago. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. But first, let me finish showing you how to install it using the edger. All right, guys, now we're ready to get this thing installed. Let's get to work. All right, guys, we're just gonna fire this edger up and walk our boundary line, cutting that trench. All right guys, now the edger did a great job of digging this trench. Ended up with a pretty consistent three inch depth the entire way. Uh, you'll notice I did have to kind of raise the back of the edger to get it deep enough. And I will admit, I wish it gave me a little bit wider trench, but I think this is gonna work and it's definitely a whole lot better than a shovel. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and run our boundary wire. So I'm starting here right where I'm gonna be going back towards the house with it later. And I'm just gonna roll out a bunch of this wire along my trench and I'm gonna be using this pallet knife to kind of push it down into our trench. And the kit does give you several of the landscaping staples so you can staple it down periodically to make sure it stays down in that trench. Now I did eventually switch to a paint stick for pushing this wire down into the ground. I think that worked a lot better and less chance of damaging the wire. And that was about the time I decided to work smarter, not harder. Now the edger was getting the job done. It did cut me a nice trench all the way around the property and I do think this is a valid option. But for a property my size, there is a better way to do it. The problem was trying to push that wire down into this thin slit over 1500 feet was just gonna take way too long. So what I decided instead was to rent this Easy Trench cable installer. This is a fantastic tool. It cuts your trench, it lays the wire into the trench, and then it puts dirt back over top of it for you all in one action. Now I rented mine at Home Depot, but you can rent these at several places. It costs just about $65 for a four hour period. And there is no doubt that this is gonna make life a whole lot easier. So for those of you that are on properties of an acre or less, or you just don't wanna spend the money for the rental, I definitely think the edger is a great option. And I am still glad I was able to show you what that process looked like. But with all that said, let's get this done the easy way. All right, guys, now this is the Easy Trench cable installer. So you see we have a spot for our wire spool. You're gonna route your wire down and through this eyelet. And you'll notice here at the bottom, 
it has a fin that you also feed the wire through and what that's going to do is hold it down into the trench for you and while these tines are cutting your trench it's also going to be throwing all of that dirt back over top of the cable that you've just laid so basically it takes care of the entire process all in one easy fluid motion the only thing you'll have to do after that is go back and pack down the dirt so now that i've already shown you one way to do it let me show you the better way to do it you're going to want to start by pulling out a good bit of excess wire and you need to stake that into the ground. So I just wrapped it around a screwdriver and drove that into the dirt. Other than that, it's going to be a similar process to what we did with the edger. We're just going to be pulling it instead of pushing it. And you can see here for the most part, this does exactly what it's designed to do. It cuts the trench, lays the wire down into the trench and then throws the dirt back on top. The only thing you'll need to do after this is go back and tamp down the dirt on top of your trench. All right guys, now we run into our first major obstacle here. We need to get across the driveway. So for those of you that have an asphalt driveway like I do or a concrete driveway, there is a way to get across this. And what we're gonna do is use our circular saw with a masonry cutting blade. And we're gonna pop a chalk line across the driveway here. And we're just gonna cut a slit all the way across the driveway that we can stick our wire down into. And then we'll go back and fill that crack. So I'm going to pop a chalk line here to make sure I get a nice straight line. I'm going to cut that slit all the way across the driveway and I do go over this a couple times just to make sure I get deep enough. To cross the driveway you just need to pull out some excess wire and then back your way across it. And once we get our wire in we're going to go back and fill that in with this black top crack and joint filler. So before pushing the wire into the slot, I'm gonna dig a little deeper right here at the edge of the driveway. And I'm gonna stake the wire down using some of those staples provided with the kit. This process went pretty good for the most part. The only issue I had were a few wet spots in my yard where the machine got clogged up with mud and I had to get in there and dig that mud out before I could keep going. Once you get back around to your starting point, you just pull out some excess wire and cut it off. And this is where I'm gonna to switch to the twisted wire and run this back to the house where we're gonna mount our transmitter. Again, remember the dogs are able to pass over the twisted wire and the signal cancels itself out. That's why you're using a twisted wire here. Now we're ready to connect everything up. So right here at our main intersection, we have four wires. We have the two ends of our boundary wire and we have our two twisted wires and we're gonna be connecting those together with wire nuts. Now it doesn't matter which side of your boundary wire goes to which of your twisted wires. So we're just gonna strip those back. We'll twist the wires together and then install our wire nut. Once we've got the two sides of our boundary wired to our twisted wire and our wire nuts on, we can put on the waterproof covers. And these are filled with grease to help prevent water from getting in there and damaging your wires. Once all our connections are made, we'll dig it out a little bit and then we'll cover everything over with dirt.
back at the other end of our twisted wire, we're gonna feed that through the conduit and into our box, and then we can mount the box to the wall. All right, guys, so if we look inside our box here, you see you have a power outlet integrated into the box, so you are gonna have to run power to that, uh, either from an existing outlet or something like that. And then you're gonna mount your transmitter. And once you get that mounted, you're gonna take your two boundary wires. It doesn't matter which one. So this is your cord wire that's coming into the box. These two outside screws uh, labeled loop are for your boundary wire. So it doesn't matter which one, you're just gonna hook those to there. And then you're gonna need to run a ground wire as well back over here. And then your power adapter just plugs in here and then into your outlet. Once you get the, all that installed, you can go ahead and put your cover back on and then you're gonna follow the instructions that came with the kit to program your transmitter. Now let's get ready to go test this thing out. And you can see here, I'm just slowly creeping up on that boundary, waiting for the beep, and when I hear the beep, I'll put a flag in. And we're gonna continue that all the way around the property. All right, guys, that is it for how to install your in-ground dog fence. We've got ours all installed, our flags are in. I've been working with Duke over the last few days to get him trained on this, and that's going pretty well. Now, I do wanna let y'all know a few issues that I had along the way. Obviously, I started out with the edger, and I do think, again, that's a great way to do it for smaller properties, for large properties like this. That trenching cable installer was much better, although that wasn't perfect as well. So a little warning for you guys, or maybe a recommendation, you should definitely wait until your ground is nice and dry before you try to run that cable machine. There are parts of my yard that were still pretty wet from recent rains, and the problem I had was the machine kept getting and clogged up with mud so I'd have to stop every 20 feet or so and dig mud out of it before I could keep going. Now the parts of my yard that were nice and dry went perfectly. I covered a hundred yard stretch in about five minutes and that's how it should be. But ultimately guys, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, make sure you let me know in the comment section. And don't forget, I am gonna have links to the system that I used in the description below if you wanna get that for yourself. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share, and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Here, come here. Come right here. Yeah, I'm gonna rub you for a second. Come here. Duke, Duke, golly.